Hey, my name is Ditek, and I know how to build a computer, and hopefully after this video, so will you. All the components that I'm going to be showcasing in this tutorial are just kind of like the average components that I feel like most people are going to have if they're building a gaming computer. And I'll leave in the description a bunch of timestamps to all the different like sections of the video, so if you only need to figure out how to install your graphics card, for example, you can just click on that timestamp and it'll take you right to where I install the graphics card and you won't have to watch the whole thing. I'll also put in the description a couple of lists of computer parts, and if you really wanted to, you could just get all the parts off of that list and use this video to help you figure out how to put them together, and then that would equal a full computer. Anyway, before I use up too much more time, let's get into the build. So all of your computer components have arrived in the mail and you're ready to assemble them. If you have different parts than I have here, don't worry about it too much because it's very likely that you'll still be able to reference this video to help you assemble your computer. For example, all Intel chips, it doesn't matter if it's an i3, i5, i7, they'll all install exactly the same way. All power supplies have the same cables that install into the same parts. All motherboards have a motherboard manual and all that kind of stuff. Water cooling is a whole different story, but I suggest air cooling your first computer because it's a lot less of a hassle and there's a lot less maintenance involved with it. The first thing you want to do is install the CPU, the RAM, and any M.2 drives you have in your motherboard. So go ahead and open up the motherboard box and make sure you grab the motherboard manual as well while you're in there because we're going to be referencing this thing quite a lot during this build. Another good tip is to keep all of your hardware manuals from all your various components in your motherboard box when you finish building your computer and keep all of the extra screws and everything that you might have in there as well just so you kind of know where everything is if you ever have to go back and reference them in the future. To install your RAM into your motherboard, just check your motherboard manual and it will tell you exactly which slots to put your RAM sticks in, assuming you have two sticks. If you have four sticks, just put them in every slot, and if you have one stick, just put it in the first slot of channel A. And if you put them in the wrong slots, your computer will still work but it's not going to be working as efficiently as it should. All RAM sticks have a little piece missing from the bottom of them, and that lines up with a little piece of plastic in the RAM slot that prevents you from installing them the wrong way. The manual told me channel A is the second and fourth slot, so those are the two that I'm going to install my RAM sticks into. Just push your RAM sticks down into the slot until the tabs on both sides click into place, and that's it. The next thing to do is to install the CPU, so take your CPU out of its box and unhinge the little cover that goes over the CPU socket. There's a small arrow on the bottom left of your CPU, and that arrow lines up with a little arrow on the motherboard, and that just tells you what orientation to keep your CPU in when you're installing it into the socket. Just rest it inside of the socket where it's supposed to go, and don't put any pressure on it at all. It's not like the RAM sticks where you have to push them into place, this just sits on top. The cover we unhinged earlier is what keeps that thing in place, so just use that little lever to lock it back down. At this point, the little black plastic piece should pop off, so just throw that into your motherboard box because we don't need it anymore. Time to move on to installing a hard drive. Now, there are a couple of different form factors that you could use for your computer, but this is how you install an M.2 drive. Solid state drives are a lot faster than regular hard drives, so I definitely suggest having one, even if it's a small one just for your operating system, because it will make your computer react a lot faster. A solid state drive comes in two different form factors, either a 2.5 inch drive, which I'll show you later on in the video, or an M.2 drive drive, which is what you're seeing now. If you get a SATA-based M.2 SSD, then it'll probably be around the same speed and price as your 2.5-inch SSDs, but if you get an NVMe SSD for your M.2 drive, then it'll be a lot faster than SATA-based drives, but it'll also be a lot more expensive, and it doesn't matter which one you get because either of them installs exactly the same way. Now you want to prepare your case so you can start putting your parts in it. Most cases will have some kind of accessory box with all of your screws inside, and in my particular case, the motherboard standoffs are in this box as well. So I have to take the motherboard standoffs for this case out of the accessory box and screw them into place where they're supposed to go on the motherboard tray so that the motherboard can sit on top of them. A lot of cases will have the motherboard standoffs already attached to the motherboard tray, so if that's the case, then not awesome, you saved a little bit of time. But if you have the same case that I do, then you're going to have to screw them in yourself, so just reference the case manual and it will tell you exactly where they go. And if you have a tempered glass side panel, make sure you put it somewhere safe while it's detached from the case and you're playing around with everything, because if you end up kicking it and breaking it, that would be super lame. The first part that we're going to put inside of our case is the power supply. All power supplies have an intake fan on one side of them, and that's to take air into the thing, cool it, or whatever, and then it exhausts the air out of the back where the little power switch is. For the actual power supply, 
applies functionality, it doesn't really matter which way you point that fan, either up or down. Either way, the thing will work exactly the same way. What will determine whether you point it up or down is if there's a place for the air to actually come from, so don't point it at like a solid piece of metal or anything. All of these cables are keyed in a certain way where you won't be able to plug them into something that they're not supposed to be plugged into, even if they look almost the same like these two 8-pin connectors. If you look closely, you can see the shapes around the pins aren't the same, so even if you tried to plug them into the wrong spot, they just wouldn't fit. I'm going to plug the cables into the power supply that I need right now before I actually install it into the case, because once it's in that little basement area, it's going to be a lot harder to plug in any cables later. You'll know what cables you need by referencing all of your other parts. Your graphics card will either need one or two cables, mine happens to need two. Your motherboard is going to need a 24-pin cable, your CPU is going to need an EPS cable. All of your hard drives need to be powered by SATA cables. If you have any peripherals to plug in, like a fan controller or something like that, you're going to need to probably power it either by a SATA power connector or a Molex connector. So you kind of just have to think of all of the different parts that you have in your build and what kind of power they're going to need and plug in the cables accordingly. If you need more help with this, you can just reference your power supplies manual and it will tell you what all of the cables are are and what they all plug into. You will have extra cables that came with your power supply that you didn't use when you're done with the build and that's totally fine. You're probably not going to use all of them. The next thing I want to do after installing the power supply is to install the motherboard. So the easiest way to do this is to turn the case over on its side. Before you even touch the motherboard, you have to install the IO shield into this little rectangular area on the back panel of the case. Some really super high-end motherboards don't make you do this, but most of the time it's part of the process. You'll have to put some good pressure on it to get it to click into place, but once it is, you can finally install the motherboard. So just lay it down on top of the motherboard standoffs that we installed earlier, and take all the motherboard screws that you you can find in your case's accessory box and screw them through the motherboard into all of the standoffs in the motherboard tray. Before we plug anything in, we want to install all the rest of the components into our computer first so that the wires don't get in the way and we have to unplug and replug in everything multiple times. I'm just going to install the case fans next because that seems like a logical next step. For your fans, having two intake fans and one exhaust fan is perfectly acceptable and will keep all of your stuff cool enough. There's kind of diminishing returns for how much cooler all of your stuff will stay if you have more than just two intake fans. If you do add a third or a fourth intake fan, you're probably going to have slightly cooler components, but it's not going to be much over the two fans. I really just decided to put three intake fans into my build because of the aesthetic appeal. And also, if you just have regular non-LED lit fans, you're just going to have one cable to plug into your motherboard, but if you have LED fans, you're probably going to have two cables, one of which controls the LEDs and one of which controls the actual fan itself. If they do have a second cable for LEDs like the fans that I have do, you're probably just going to have to plug them into some kind of LED controller, and we'll deal with that later. Now, if you have any drives that aren't in the M.2 form factor, you're either going to have 2.5 inch drives or 3.5 inch drives, both of which I have right here. Your 2.5 inch is either going to be a solid state drive or just a regular hard drive, and your 3.5 inch will almost always be just a regular hard drive. Now, if you do decide to get a regular hard drive just to have a lot of cheap storage space, it doesn't really matter if it's in the smaller or the larger form factor, they both could be exactly the same speeds. And because of that, I would almost always suggest getting a 2.5 inch drive as opposed to a 3.5 inch drive, and it doesn't really matter if it's a solid state drive or a regular hard drive, just get the smaller one no matter what. In almost all computer cases, you'll find a hard drive cage, which is this weird little metal box that I have here, and that's where you put your 3.5 inch drives and your 2.5 inch drives. But a lot of times, cases will have methods to install 2.5 inch drives in a lot more out of the way areas, and that's why they're better. As you can see here, I can put this smaller hard drive onto this weird little panel, and that just attaches to the back of the motherboard tray. The next thing I want to install is the CPU cooler. Now, I like to install the motherboard into the case before I put the CPU cooler on, and that's that's just because I like to have the motherboard standing upright so I can see both sides of it and that's because most of the time when you're installing your CPU cooler it's going to have this little backplate that goes on the back of the motherboard which holds the front part on. Now you could put the CPU cooler on before you actually put the motherboard into the case, it's just whatever you find is easier, I like to do it this way. So the cooler that I'm using in this build is the Cryorig H7. It's relatively cheap and it does a really good job of cooling your CPU and it looks pretty good. It's super easy to install, all you have to do is line up the backplate with the holes in the motherboard that the screws go through and then put the screws through the backplate and the motherboard. 
Then you flip it over to the front side of the motherboard and you put your thermal paste on. Just when you're putting your thermal paste on, use about as much as I'm using in this video because if you use more or less thermal paste, your cooling will be less efficient. Then you just line up the actual cooler with the screws that are now sticking out of the motherboard and screw them into place. Don't worry if you don't have the CryoRig H7, all CPU coolers basically go on the same way. And even if they don't, they're all really easy to install, so just refer to the manual that comes with them and you'll be able to figure it out. Once the CPU cooler is where it's supposed to be, you have to plug the fan that comes attached to it into the motherboard. There will be a specific spot that you plug this fan into, usually it says CPU fan on the motherboard, and if you can't find it, just refer to your motherboard manual. You're supposed to plug it into this fan header as opposed to the other ones, because this one is controlled by the temperature of your CPU, so it'll speed up when it gets hotter and slow down when it gets cooler. Usually there's two fan headers dedicated to your CPU, the other one being CPU optional, and that one just does exactly the same thing. So if you have two fans on your CPU cooler, you can plug both of them into those two. The next part you're going to install is your graphics card, so just line it up with the PCIe lane that you're going to install it in, and you'll be able to see which of the weird little cover things on the back panel of the case that you're going to have to unscrew in order to screw your graphics card into where they used to be. So just take those little cover things out, usually there are two of them that you have to take out, and then slide your graphics card into the PCIe lane that you've chosen. It'll snap into place, and then you take the same screws that you just unscrewed, and then re-screw them back into the same spot that they were in, but this time they'll be supporting your graphics card. On lower end and older motherboards, the top PCIe lane is the fastest, so that's going to be the one you want to put your graphics card into, but on a lot of the newer motherboards, it really doesn't matter because all the lanes are the same speed. Now we're going to start plugging stuff in, starting with the front panel connectors, which kind of look like this. They are just the power switch, the reset switch, maybe a couple of LEDs, and your USB cable. If you don't plug this stuff in, or you plug it in wrong, and you press the power button, then nothing will happen and you'll think you broke everything. So don't worry too much if you do end up finishing your build and pressing the power button and nothing happens. This might be one of the causes, you just didn't plug these cables in correctly. To see the correct way of plugging them in, you just have to refer to your motherboard manual and it will tell you exactly where they go. Once you get the power switch and reset switch and that kind of thing sorted out, then you have to plug in the HD audio and the USB connectors, which are the other two that you usually find in your front panel connectors. To find the connectors on the motherboard that you plug those into, again, you just have to refer to your motherboard manual. The HD audio cable looks a lot like a different cable, which is the USB 2.0 cable, and you can tell that there's a difference just because they're keyed in a different way. One of them is missing a pin in a certain place, and the other one is missing a pin in a different place. You won't be able to plug them into the wrong spot because of this missing pin, so that's really convenient. Once you get your front panel cables all sorted out, then you have to start working with your power supply cables. So just route them into the general area that they're going to go and plug them in. I know I've said this a lot already, but it's worth saying again that if you're confused by these cables, you can just look at your power supply manual and it will tell you exactly what all the cables are, and then look at your motherboard manual and it will tell you exactly where all the cables go. I hope this video makes it kind of clear that figuring out where these cables go is relatively easy to do. And I forgot to install my exhaust fan before, so I'm just going to do that now, and I should mention that the airflow for these fans always goes in one direction, which is in through the front and out through the back, the front being the nice pretty part where there's no little braces that hold the fan into place, and the back being the back where the braces are that hold the fan into place. And finally, the last thing that you might need to install in your build is any kind of peripheral, and I happen to need an LED controller for my fan, so that is the one that I'm going to be installing. Now I can't go into too much detail with this because there are so many different ones that you might have, and I just can't go over all of them, but I can say that in order to power them, you're probably either going to need your SATA power cable or a Molex connector, which is the thing that I showed you earlier in the video but that we never used. If you have multiple hard drives and a lot of your SATA connectors are going towards powering those, you might just have to plug in another SATA cable into your power supply and just have two SATA power cables. Or you could be lucky like me and only need one cable. Each cable has three different SATA power connectors on it, and I only had three SATA powered things to power, so it worked out perfectly for me. As you just saw, the USB 2.0 cable looks really similar to the HD audio cable from the front panel that we plugged in earlier, but it's got a different pinout, so don't worry about plugging it into the wrong connector. At this point, the only things that I haven't covered are plugging your fans into the fan headers on your motherboard and running a SATA data cable from your motherboard to your hard drives. 
The fan headers are in all kinds of different spots on all kinds of different motherboards, so you've just got to reference your motherboard manual to see where your fan headers are. My motherboard happens to only have three regular fan headers, so I had to use the CPU optional fan header to plug my exhaust fan into. That's totally fine to do, it'll just mean that your exhaust fan speed will be controlled by your CPU temperature. And you just saw me plug the SATA data cable from the motherboard into the hard drive. You can find this cable in your motherboard box, and no matter what kind of hard drive you have, whether it be an SSD or a regular one, you're going to have to plug it in the same exact way with the same exact cables. Now the very last cable we plug in is from the power supply into a wall outlet. So do that, and then don't forget to turn on the power switch on the power supply, because otherwise nothing will happen when you turn it on. And that should be it. You just built a computer. There's just one more thing I need to mention. When you're plugging your video cables from your monitor into your computer, make sure you plug them into your graphics card and not into your motherboard. Your screen will still come up and it'll look like it's still working if you plug it into your motherboard, but then your graphics card will literally be doing nothing. So if you try to play any video games or something that a computer requires a graphics card to be good at, then you'll get terrible, terrible performance. Just make sure your HDMI or your DVI cable or whatever you're using is plugged into your graphics card and everything will work as it's supposed to. So hopefully after watching this video, you're confident enough to be able to build your own computer. The only thing that you'd have left to do after putting together all your hardware and confirming that it works is install an operating system. And let's be honest, if you put this thing together for gaming, you're probably going to install Windows. If you don't have an operating system on your computer yet and you boot it up and plug it into a monitor, all that will come up is the BIOS screen, which is basically just a bunch of settings that you can change. But if you do get to that screen, that means you were successful and everything worked out as intended. Anyway, I do a lot of computer modification on this channel, so if you liked this video and you want to see more stuff like that, you can subscribe and check the description for a bunch of my social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, that kind of thing, and I'll see you in the next one.